what is going on guys welcome back so today episode we are going to continue on the uh, the series that I did with the 1950s computers uh, this we are in the 1960s now I'm not sure if I can get through all these before I go to work but we're going to try uh, let's see Heathkit EC1 From 1950 to 1965, electronic analog vacuum tube computers were used to design, test, and run civ civilian and military equipment like aircraft, ships, or rockets. The first systems were very expensive, however, components cost, especially vacuum tubes, was steadily decreasing. By the way, guys. I'm on o-computers.com So if you want to check it out or uh, you know check it out while we go into this or if you just want to read it yourself because you don't want to hear my beautiful voice by all means uh, put it down uh, I put the website down in the description, and uh, yeah, you guys feel free to check it out, and yeah, all that fun stuff. Coffee, coffee's good. In 1960, Heathkit launched the Heathkit EC1, the first analog computer almost anyone could afford it. It was sold in a kit of pre-assembled forms and was quickly widely used in industry and universities. Unlike all modern binary computers which accept only two values as entry 0 or 1, the analog computer represents input and output data and voltage levels. So any uh, positive or negative value could re be read directly from the built-in meter in the external oscilloscope, something like that. Could also you could also used as a display device as well as a graphy grapher for printed uh, results. Hmm. Got a text message. In spite of its apparent simi uh, simplicity, simplicity, the EC1 could solve a multitude of complex mechanical and mathematical problems thanks, thanks to nine DC optional amplifiers. amplifiers. Three initial conditions uh, power supplies, potentiometers, Relay, relay uh, connectors, high pro, uh, can't read right now, high precision resistors and capacitors and built an oscillator for repetitive operation from 0 0.1 to 15 operations per second. The computer was described by Heath Kit as an excellent teaching aid for a course in a computer and computer electronics vividly illustrates the electronic analog and analogies Jesus to mathematical problems handles problems handles problems as complex as flow fluid flow what wait what Handles problems as complex as fluid flow. Uh, so I'm taking that it handles flood problems? I, I don't know. 
damped harmonic motion. That sounds sexual. Anyways. <laughs> and flight of projectile and a vicious medium. Okay, are they talking about sexual things or are we talking about computer cell? Okay. Moving on. Computer problems could be programmed by inserting several patch codes into pro problem board sockets and thus linking and chain several built in components together. EC1 and other analog computers were all used until 1965 when first, when first affordable digital computers became available. Here are some EC1 unusual technical features taken from Heathkit brochure. Amplifiers open loop gain approximately 1000 output minus 60 plus 60 volts at dot 7 MA. Power supplies a 300 volts at 25 MA electronically regulated variable from plus 250 to plus 350 volts. Repetitive operation Motor vibrator cycles a relay of adjustable rates 0.1 to 15 CPS. All right. We get to the comments here shortly. And my chair just went down. Hold on. Give me a second. I gotta fix myself. This chair been broken for a while. I've been needing getting a new chair. Eventually, that will happen. Name. Oh wait. Technical information. Name EC1. Manufacturer Heath Kit. Type Professional Computer Organ. USA. You. <coughs> Excuse me, 1960. Excuse me, keyboard, pentento meters, and <gasps> switches. Jesus. Excuse me. CPU, no processor, but 9 PC, 9 PC, 9 DC operational amplifiers. Speed, 0 0.5 to 15 repetitive operations per second. RAM, no memory. Text modes, volt meter, size rate 50.2 width by 38.1 height by 29.2 depth in centimeters, 21 kilograms. Power supply, built in 100 watts main power supply, price $400. Still got to see if they got any pictures here. Oh yeah. Can we uh no, we can't do that. Shit, that sucks. Those are the switches. The more Are those the same switches? I do believe so. Front panel, front panel. This is a close up to the front panel. Yeah, all these three is front panels, it looks like. That's cool. Let's open up some more pictures here. Okay, so this is a close up to front panel. This is another, they said top side, but. It's actually 
front panel, top side, inside. I wonder what the, the oh, that probably where the uh, the scope or what level it was talking about going and never mind, it's a trap door for ventilation. Actually, read the text there, William. It tells you. When the system overheat, a user will open the trap door for ensuring a better ventilation. Here's the inside of it. Ain't much in there. Just some... Just some steel, some capacitors, transistors, switches, wires, Some more insides. Seven of the nine switches simplify vacuum tubes placed along the front. Very nice. So these here, right here, the close up hill, like back hill, right hill, right, and then right uphill that's all the inside the vacuum tubes and here's it is in use in the manual cover right here that's sweet now oh, there's the scope right here the little block box here with the screen scope monitor whatever you want to call it another manual that's pretty cool. I am not going to be able to read that to you guys. This is from 1961 Heathkit catalog. That's very, very cool. But right here it says $215. So I wonder if they drop the price half, you know, cut the price in half in, in 1961. Interesting. Documents, no documents, comments. All right, we got two comments here. Whale well, from Germany says, uh, I see this EC1 optional and complete cables, tubes, ETC, Fred. That was from June 4th, 2018. I should have read the last one because that's from May 9th, 2003. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Franco Salvio from Italy says, I'm an Italian electronic engineer. I'm interested in vacuum tube analog operational Amplifiers, I would be very grateful to people that could send me schematics of EC1 and other vacuum tube operational amps. Thank you and best regards. Not saying the email, though you guys can see the email. Okay, and that's it. Let's see if they got anything in 1961. Yeah, I do. Me seep. Or is it me seat? I think it's me seat. All right. All right, the seat from the seat. Damn, look at that big old computer. The beginning of IT in Romania. Ooh. Professor V. 
Bautak. Bautak. Said uh, in the conference, computers and computer networks in Romania between 1953 to 2001 from the Romanian academic at November 22nd, 2001 that the years 1950 had marked a Romanian priority in, in Romanian computer computing techniques. Hmm. Uh, we're in 1960. I do believe where the hell are they getting from 1950? I don't know. Three computer techniques that schools were then created. I am so gonna butcher these names. Butcherist, Butcherist, IFA, Institutional, yep. Yep. That's the names right there. The atomical, uh, atomical, physics, physics institute. The atomical physics. I don't know why I keep saying physics. It's physics. The atomical physics institute. Mesit. Electronic. Computing Machine of the Polytechnical Institute of Timasio. Timasio? I don't know. D A C I C C. Automated Computing Distributive. Depositive? Yeah, depositive. Automated computing depositive of the Computing Institute of Kludge. 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't read today for some reason. Maybe I'm still trying to wake up. I've only been up for like an hour or so. <laughs> Anyways, the seat was a typical first generation computer. It contained over 2,000 electronic tubes, tens of thousands passive components, worlds of 30 bits, an external memory drum equivalent of 3KB. Data was input into a computer by punched paper tape. As a printer was an electronic typing machine. Its speed was about 50 operations per second and was programmed in machine code. Masit was one of the first Romanian computers. It worked for the first time, I guess, around 1961 to 1962. Thanks to Stefan Deli for all this information. Thank you, Stefan. Oh, that's Stefan. I don't know. You guys... You, you guys can debate in the comments, if you will. Like Dusty Rhodes say, uh, if you will. Name, Masit. Manufacturer, Masit. Type. Professional computer. Origin. Romanian. Year. 1961. Built-in language. Machine language. Compu uh, keyboard. Binary switches. CPU. Unknown. Speed. 50 instructions per second. RAM. Unknown. Size. Weight. A few tons. Holy shit. That's, that's heavy. Built-in media. Tape puncher. Okay. Let's look at the pictures here. Oh, we got some pictures. Look at that. Oh, leave some of them's even in color. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's 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 cool. You ain't gonna find something like this in the uh, 
rock places anymore, guys. Look at that. That that's that's a whole fucking wall of computer cabinetry right there. Hell yeah. Look, look, that's where the, the, the tapes and all that goes into. I think. Pretty sure. That's cool. Anyways. Links. Ain't worry about the links. Ain't no documents. Comments. No comments. Excuse me. Okay. Let's see if they got anything in 1962. Nothing. 1963. Ooh. Okay. As again, so gonna butcher these guys' names. So I'm sorry in advance. Bawama Bawamushisho work. Ah, yep. Trying to think of a nickname, Hill. Are we just gonna be okay? Here we go. Zala Mahalas. Ah, uh, something like that. We are gonna be say an MZM from now on. Salatron eight twenty. Oh, I thought that was an S right there. <laughs> My bad. Salatron 8205. In 19... The fuck was that? Oh. PlayStation. In 1963, engineers at the Institute for Machinia Machinio Wretched Tech Nick Institute for Machine Computation Computed Institute for Machine Computation Technology Computation That doesn't even sound healthy <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, is that even a word? Uh, computation. <laughs> okay. We we go. We gonna go with it. And this draw, Dresden, D G D R X. Eastern Germany finished the D4A. The D4A has been developed on the basis of the Klarachenmat. I don't know. The KD1. <laughs> the KD1. We're going to call it KD1 even though it says D1 right there. The KD1 just sounds cool. <laughs> From 1956, the system was then manufactured by the VIB, VB, BZM, the BZM, and three versions under the name Celatron 2801. 
the Celatron 8201, the 8205, and the 8295Z. About 3,000 examples will produce the B, the D4A is seen as the first PC of the GDO. By the way, VEB is short for Yep, Volks. Gonna try this again. Volks, I know. B-trib? B-trib? And it means as much as factory belonging to the people. Very nice. The C-8205 central unit was compressed of the Laroque Insti Instructions Council, Instructions Registration, and Address Decoder. Decoder, excuse me. The Rutch, Rutch and Rock Accumulator in Math Operations. In the Trauma Sparks. Sparks? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Maybe it's not even close. <laughs> Magnetic drum memory. The formal type, the formal two subsystems, were reali realized as discrete circuits, including approximately four hundred transistors and two thousand diodes. <coughs> Working memory was released with the magnetic drum memory providing 4096. 4096 rows of 33 bits. That's very impressive. For back then, that's impressive. Moreover, the system was compressed of a command desk with keyboard, a lamp array for displaying operational stats, switches for locking central tracks of drum memories, drum memory, two paper tape readers, and one puncher, and a typewriter-like printer. It needed about nine square meters space in a air room conditional and noise insulated room. Power consumption was 1500 VA. What is VA? Volt? No. VA. I, I'm not sure. The system could be programmed in pure machine code or interpret pseudo code using a program called GIPS I. G I P S I. Maybe I means one. Yeah, we ain't doing all that. Floating point. I'm I'm taking this means this right here. But yeah, I ain't gonna try to butcher all that. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Floating point interpretation system with single world linked. It simulates floating point automatics as well as number of pseudo data registers. The GIPS I interpreted interpreter had to be read into memory before use. You know, I uh, when when I went to college, I think it was my bachelor's degree year. I learned a little bit about pseudocode. That it, <clears throat> it's very interesting how pseudocode works and it's very simple. Moreover, it was possible to program the system in PS2, which probably meant programming language 2. It was developed by VEB engineers. This language implemented various data types, mathematical operations, I.O. commands, and control systems equivalent 
equivalent to go to if then ah very nice go to if then go to labels subroutines subroutines and for loops that's interesting so the all those loops that we use now goes all the way back in the 60s and maybe in the 50s too that's very cool the source program has the source program had forced to be punched on paper tape and then complied as the PS2 compiler uh, copied the complete memory the resulting object code in the GIPS I format was immediately, pu immediately punched out on paper tape after that the object code could be read and ran and run with the GIPS I interpreter in memory the picture shows the C8205 model thanks to Roman von Rotberg and his site for information and pictures. Okay, so this is going to be the last computer we do. Uh, if we have time, I'll get back on and do a little bit of coding for my game but uh, uh yeah let's get into the technical information name set Celatron 8205 manufacturer BZM type professional computer origin Germany year 1963 building language none keyboard primary keyboard CPU discrete components Speed unknown. RAM fifty fit uh RAM four thousand ninety six by thirty three bits of on magnetic drum memory. ROM none. Text modes no display but lamp area. Array lamp array. Size weight required space approx nine square meters. Building media. Two paper tape punchers, one paper tape reader. OS, no OS. Power supply, 1500 VA power consumption. Price unknown. Okay. Got any pictures for us? Oh, look at this. Okay. So, it was the whole computer right here. The printer's on the right. And. Look like the tape readers right here. Computer actually right here. That's cool. Magnetic drum. Drawing of magnetic drum. And then the manual cover. What else we got? We got some diagrams, block diagrams. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Um, any comments? Two comments. One of them I can only read to you guys. September 23rd, 2008. Jordanian Rum says, Usually came in colors of gray and black. Very rarely white. Very nice. Alright, so let's go back and 1964, nothing. 1965. We got two computers left. Three. Holy shit, come on. There we go. Nothing in 67 or 68. 69. So four computers left. 
So, we'll finish this up uh, probably tomorrow. Hmm. Excuse me. Uh, like I said, I'll put the the, the I put the um I put the website in for you guys in the descriptions. So if you guys do want to finish the 1960 series up before I get around to it tomorrow, then you can. But uh, yeah. Let me go ahead. Copy this. And I'm going to wrap this up, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.